Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cabral Concept. We're here today with our Friday review, my favorite way of ending the week with you, getting to go over an anything goes kind of show. We're gonna be going through my product reviews of the week, my book reviews of the week. I'll be going through Herb of the Week, trying to teach you just a little bit more about all of the power that nature has literally given us for all the vitamins, the minerals, the extracts, the nutrients, the antioxidants, and also a powerful anti-inflammatory we'll be going through today as well. You don't want to miss that. I always bring you one or two research studies, typically two, that I think that you should know about, if not always for you. Remember, it's not always about you. It's not always about me, but it's also about sharing this information with people that we love, that we care about as well. And that's that's just as much really what this show is all about. Um, and then we'll do a little recap of the week. But before we get started, I love being able to share with you what's going on in my life, our private practice, which is Equal Life. That's our global functional medicine practice, uh, literally helping people all over the world and shipping and open sourcing functional medicine-based care for the past six years now to 27 countries around the world. So that's our mission. Our mission is to simply open source what we know works. You know, we're, we're approaching, well, it's, again, I always say over a quarter million people, it has to be approaching 300,000 one-on-one client appointments. And we have so much data. There's no more guesswork. There's no more online guru-based work, any of that type of stuff. We share with you literally what the science says and what we know to work. And that's the bottom line of what we do is that we're not making things up. We're not guessing and we don't need to. After 25 years in private practice and seeing now over a quarter million people, we just simply want to share with you what we know works. So always uh, excited to be able to do that. I know each and every week I just try to bring you something fun through Equal Life. Maybe you've never experienced it before. Um, this week you've experienced this before, but we are giving away our Equal Life based tumblers. This is a great way to put your daily nutritional support shake in there every single morning. If you're making yourself a smoothie for breakfast, I'm telling you right now, the absolute best way to start your morning with ease of digestion, not overloading your system, but at the same time, starting off with good protein, carbs, and healthy fats fat, a lot of antioxidants, all of the things with help with overall wellness, uh, maintaining a healthy weight or getting healthy weight. And then also uh, with anti-aging because you don't work on anti-aging when you're 65, 75, 85 years old, you work on anti-aging today, right? It starts today. So that's really what it's all about. Um, so right now, again, if you want to grab your free Equal Life tumbler, tumbler uh, I've never referred to it in my life before as a tumbler, but people on our team do. I just call it you know, a thermos, uh, basically a double walled, like the Yeti. It's basically like that. Uh, and you get one completely free with all qualifying orders. But also the nice thing is, well, and, and I love, I mean, I'm, I don't know, you probably know this about me if you've been listening to the show for a little bit. I'm a holidays kind of guy. I'm an events, birthdays kind of guy. I love all of those different things. I think that kind of goes back maybe to my childhood of, uh, of you know, having coming from a, a decent sized family and always getting together for the holidays and birthdays and making a big deal of it. I always thought that was a fun time. Well, with Memorial Day, we're typically always heading up to Maine with the family, getting to see uh, my nieces and nephews, getting to see my parents, my extended family. So always really uh, happy and excited to be able to do that. And, you know, Maine, Maine is definitely hit or miss for Memorial Day. It might be 50 degrees, 45, 50 degrees and raw and a little chilly, or it might be a beautiful 70 degree day. You never quite know uh, what you're going to get up there in, in Maine. But again, I love it. One of my favorite places to go. And also for the Memorial Day weekend, if you're not already a part of our SMS uh, text list, I would definitely check it out. You're going to get exclusive uh, offers and pop-ups like our free shipping offer going on right now over at Equalife. If you're not a part of all of this, head on over to equi.life forward slash text equi.life forward slash text. Let's just make sure that's the actual website I should be sending you to. And uh, lo and behold, there it is. Oh, and it's a nice little $20 offer there too. I didn't even know that the team had put that up. So uh, fantastic. That is what's going on over the private practice. For me, little time off with the family. I love to be able to take that time, uh, really unwind, unplug, and, uh, and enjoy. And that's the truth. So that's what it's all about. And then it's a nice little segue, of course, to summer. Like, hey, after Memorial Day weekend, that's, uh, in my opinion, it's not quite summer yet, but that's like the official start to getting into the summer-based season. Hopefully you've been tuning into the Cabral Concept podcast 
all week. But if not, let's give you a little intro as to what you may have missed. So Monday's podcast, I got so many direct messages on for the past two weeks. So if you haven't checked them out, you know, that this was it. Willpower will only get you or only help you accomplish so much in your life. And so that's a really big one. I wanted to make sure that you checked out that show. That was a big, big one. And then also, uh, people liked finding out, hey, are you the bottleneck to your problems? Because a lot of times in life, we, even though we don't want to admit it, myself included, we are the person holding us back from the life that we know we can be living. And, And I think deep down, at the end of the day, when it's just you and you on your own, alone with your thoughts, and you're really open, you're really self aware. Um, you can you can actually have that conversation with yourself. Like, listen, where can I get better? Not hard on yourself. You know, you can still be gentle, but say, hey, where can I get better? How can I improve? Am I the one that's holding me back? These are big questions to ask in life. So these past three uh, Mindset and Motivation Mondays, you can always just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You can check out the little image at the top for Mindset and Motivation or right on the right-hand side if you're on desktop for Mindset and Motivation Mondays. This past Monday was the simple five-step goal achievement plan. I wanted to give Brian Tracy a little shout out. He's just been such a mainstay in the self-improvement-based field. And so, uh, you know, just great work to him. That's basically it. So I wanted to uh, share with you just a simplified version. Like these are the five steps time to get to it. Like we're, we're approaching the halfway point during the year. If you haven't accomplished or you're not on your way to accomplishing your 2022 goals, let's do it. Like let's, let's get things together. You have plenty of time. Very few goals take six months to accomplish. So let's get started. No matter what month you're listening to this, no matter what year you listen to this podcast, it's time to get to it, right? Yesterday was the best day to get started. But if not, today we'll do just fine, right? That's how the quote goes. All right. Tuesday's show, episode 2300, was the best longevity nutrient. Is it NMN or is it NR versus NAD? Check that out. I mean, this is the nutrient that so many people have been talking about over the past few years. Now, I've been using it now for four years. I'm a fan. I really am. But I always tell you, hey, don't use too much. Don't use past this amount. This amount seems to be the perfect sweet spot for most people. Here's the version that I'm using and why. So definitely check that out. Uh, I love talking about anti-aging and and the best of uh, medical-based science and research as well. All right, episode 2301, three reasons cold exposure increases fat burning. This was a fun show too. Uh, Not a lot of people know why cold-based therapy actually burns more fat or uh, and, and it's very interesting because it doesn't just burn more fat, but it actually changes the type of fat that you hold in your body. So you want to check that out. All right. And then yesterday's show was what's better, a Metcon workout or a HIT workout. So check that out. If you're interested in boosting your metabolism, getting the most out of your workouts, whether they're 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you'll want to check out that show too. Those are all at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. All right. Today's show, now that we did our little recap, we're going to go over our herb of the week. This was, I mean, I always, again, this, all of the Cabral concept, every single show is essentially user generated. What are the questions people are asking? What are our clients asking for? What are my health coaches mentioning to me? What are our integrative health practitioners asking for as well, our IHPs? So this week, Uh, they or someone was asking about bee pollen. Apparently, there's people talking about bee pollen. I thought this was just something like me and a few strange individuals, (laughs) you know, talk about and and sometimes use. And um, so I wanted to go over all of the benefits of bee pollen here today. So let me see if I can pull up my notes uh, from this particular show as well on all of those great benefits of bee pollen. But while I'm pulling it up, I can tell you this, just just from uh, past and and going really deep in this product a number of years ago, because the way that I use it is actually in capsules uh, for my daughters and um, just on smoothie bowls. So I'm not typically taking a lot of capsules of it, but I do like adding a little bit to smoothie bowls. And I think it adds a nice little texture uh, and taste as well. So um, well, one thing, and I'll, I'll share with this, I'll share it at the end what I use for my daughters uh, as well. And, and I'll take them every once in a while, but I, I just, again, kind of like hierarchy of supplement need, like nobody's deficient in bee pollen, right? So it's just like, it's a nice add-on. So I always short my deficiencies first, and then I add on these nice things, nice to haves after, afterwards. But um, bee pollen 
is a very unique nutrient. So we're talking about uh, bee pollen is a mixture of nectar from bees, right? Or, or from flowers, I should say, uh, enzymes, honey, the wax from the honeycomb, flower pollen, and bee-based secretions. And because it has such a wide variety and it's pulled from different flowers, it can have over 250 active substances in it. What are those substances? Well, they're vitamins, they're minerals, they're antioxidants, and believe it or not, certain types of fat. So powerful that these are used all the time. Martians, again, like not a lot of people know about it, but they're used to help squelch oxidative stress. So free radical damage, that's probably the number one reason why you're using bee pollen. You're helping as a uh, natural nutrients that help support healthy levels of inflammation. And it's helping to support healthy levels of inflammation from high antioxidant content and the ability to squelch those free radicals, which are the oxidants. So free radicals create oxidative stress, and that oxidative stress can be squelched by antioxidants. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do antioxidants work, or where do they come from? Well, essentially, they are the phytonutrients in plants. That's why, again, all these people saying that plants are dangerous. I mean, it's just, it's such a wild, it's such a wild even statement and way of thinking. I get it. If people have gut issues or other issues, you need to clear those up. But all of these conventional medicine doctors somehow turned nutritionists when they don't have a lot of nutrition training is it, starting to get a little bit out of control, telling people to eat only meat or only organs or only, you know, one thing. It's just, that is not a balanced diet. Um, it, it just, it sells a lot of books, I'm sure. There's no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, I mean, aren't we trying to help people? I mean, that's the goal. And I know people aren't really trying to do, I know most um, of the gurus are not supposed to be, they're not trying to do people wrong. They're just, they're misled because they went on a X only based diet and it helped them lose weight and feel better and whatever. But again, they don't, they don't peel back the onion. They haven't gone deep enough. They're looking at things from a conventional medicine reductionist standpoint, like, oh, well, if I only eat meat, well, meat is the medicine now. And now I don't have any more joint pain or psoriasis or, or bloating or gas. Okay, sure. But why is that? Well, you removed all the things that was causing fermented and gas. But again, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna talk about that today. I've talked about that many times. Uh, but the bottom line is this: in these these plant-based substances or something like a bee pollen, we get all these flavonoids, carotenoids. We get um, camphorol. We get glutathione. We get um, quercetin, and all of these are powerful, powerful antioxidants that not only help many times with actual detoxification like a quercetin, uh, but it helps squelch oxidative stress. May even be helpful with blood sugar, may be helpful with cardiovascular issues um, such as well, coronary artery disease, but again, we're not making any medical claims here or medical recommendations. Uh, as I said before, helps with liver detoxification uh, and balancing healthy levels of inflammation. The last item I want to add to it, and I know that it seems like a miracle-based food, but it is a true superfood, is that it helps with infections. Like it, it, I have to say may, it may help with infections. So it may help with boosting the immune system. And I think that that's pretty uh, powerful as well. I won't talk about anything with cancer-based claims uh, or hormonal-based claims. I'll let you do your own research if you choose to. So the way that I use it, and I'll talk about these in the future, and please, so please do stay tuned for future Friday reviews. Um, I use it with my daughters with um, uh, propolis, royal jelly, and bee pollen combination capsules. I cannot link to those, believe it or not, on a product, on a podcast page. I had to remove all of my links uh, per um, what the FDA and FTC uh, deem like their responsibility. Uh, but what I can tell you is this, I can put them at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash resources, I'll link up the company that I like. And so it's the same company that I use for my daughters uh, at Equal Life. We don't make any of these uh, great products. We don't plan to. So we recommend other amazing companies because again, that's what it's all about is helping people, right? So that's what it's about. Uh, again, I think that this can be a great product. I certainly don't use it all the time because I have antioxidants every single day. And Sometimes I like these and sometimes I don't use them. 
But uh, really, really, really great herb that I just simply wanted to share with you. Can you call it an herb? Maybe, maybe not. We'll classify it as a superfood and we'll leave it at that. All right, so stephencabral.com forward slash resources. I'll pop that in there. And then you can always get the powdered form of bee pollen and you can add that uh, to your smoothie bowls if you choose to as well. The only thing you should watch out for is people with allergies, asthma, histamine issues, you probably don't want to start here, right? Because like a raw honey or something else, you may have to adjust to the pollen, right? Because there's pollen in it. So hopefully that is helpful. All right. Uh, I also wanted to do a book review with you today. Uh, I chose these two out of my bookshelf. I've got, uh, well, not a million, but 3,000 plus books. Probably still have like 2,100 still or so. Uh, But these are two things that people have been asking me quite a bit about. So this is an older book called The Untold Story of Milk. I read this uh, many, many years ago, and I decided to give it a reread because so many people are talking about uh, raw milk. So this will give you a really good history of raw milk. It is biased towards people drinking raw milk. But as I've said before in the past, raw milk and conventional milk that you buy in a store are two totally different things, completely different. When you heat a substance like a raw milk uh, above the 145 degrees or so, pasteurization-based stage to kill any bacteria, et cetera, you're also removing a lot of the enzymes. And you are killing a lot of these specific nutrients that would only be there from the raw milk. Am I telling you to go out and drink raw milk? I'm not telling you to go out and drink raw milk. That's everyone's decision as to what they choose to. And it's also illegal in many states. They sell it as pet food-based milk, uh, but you know you can always decide to read between the lines of however you want on that. But I will tell you that uh, there there can be a lot of benefits for those people that are especially um, missing nutrients, malnourished, not growing well, very catabolic, et cetera, et cetera. I will tell you, though, that milk, casein, which is about 80% of the protein in it, can still be quite a food sensitivity and food allergy, especially for people with an unbalanced gut. I definitely do recommend running an IgG food sensitivity test first. You can see the one I recommend at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. If you don't have a sensitivity, well, then maybe you'll look into it. Uh, But I would also share with you one other note on that, that you'll probably be able to find raw sheep or raw goat's milk, uh, which is uh, readily available too. And that is much easier to digest for many people, children and adults. And so if you're looking at a raw based version, it may be something to look into. All right. So that's the first book to check out. And the second one, again, bias towards using this, but it's called sodium bicarbonate. You know, sodium bicarbonate because it's just called baking soda. That's basically it. Baking soda is sodium bicarb or bicarbonate. I answered this over the weekend on a house call. And so I told the person on the house call that I would, I think the person's name was Jamie, but I can't remember that specifically, that um, I would do a, a little bit more of a podcast on it. And so I'm doing that now. So sodium bicarb is a very, very interesting We'll call it a supplement, again, because you're supplementing your diet. So again, bee pollen is a supplement, even though it's natural, but you're just supplementing your diet. That's all. Uh, Coffee is a supplement. Tea is a supplement, right? These are just supplements. We just kind of like find our favorite supplements, and then we say those are okay, and the other ones we say, oh, no, no, that's not okay, right? It's it's very funny how we all create these dogmas around what's acceptable and, and what's not. But sodium bicarbonate, and you go easy. Again, if you decide to read the book and use it, start at a quarter of a teaspoon. Don't start at a teaspoon, um, and, and don't use it with meals, because with a meal, it will actually Uh, shut down your stomach acid production because it's very alkaline and you're trying to create an acid-based fluid in the stomach with your hydrochloride, your pepsin hydrochloride, in order to better break down protein. So this may be best used. If I were a person that was using this, I would use it right before bed. Um, And you can see the different uses of how sodium bicarbonate has been used over the years. So am I recommending sodium bicarb to everyone? No, of course not. I'm not an all for everyone kind of person. And you'd also want to look into why you might have the imbalances of why you'd need sodium bicarb in the first place. But uh, it's a short book. Mark, Dr. Mark uh, Circus, I believe is how you pronounce that name right here. Very short. I think it's only like, yeah, 150 pages, but it's also a very easy read. Um, 
well, I shouldn't say it's an easy read. It has a lot of good science in there, but it's written in a way that's very easy and approachable, in my opinion. The Untold Story of Milk was written by um, uh, naturopathic doctor Ron Schmid, and this one's a little bit longer, uh, 400 pages, so it's a good one, but again, like it's going to give you a lot of details on raw milk. If you're interested in either one of these topics, if it interests you and why people are using them, how people are using them, well, I'm here to just give you two good book recommendations on that. All right? So again, um, when people say, hey, take it with a grain of salt, that doesn't mean that it's bad information. It doesn't even mean that it's not true information. They're both true. It's just that doesn't mean you necessarily have to do it, right? So when I give you a book recommendation, it's for knowledge, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out and do it. But it's good to have the knowledge because maybe you or maybe someone else needs it in the future. All right, research studies for the day are in, and they are early dementia. Believe it or not, early dementia may be able to be caught with just heart rate alone. Let's take a look into this. So this one is a study do done by um, Dr. Umahori. And again, I apologize if, if that's not how you pronounce the last name. It's I-M-A-H-O-R-I. -I, medical doctor and PhD. Uh, postdoctoral researcher at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, and this was done over with over 2,000 people, and it was published in Alzheimer's and Dementia, the journal. Okay, so let's read about it. Uh, Dr. Imahori says, among people age 60 and older, dementia risk was 55%. I mean, which is significant, right? I mean, that, that is significant. So more than one out of two people. Um, and this was for people with a average resting heart rate of 80 beats per minute versus those with an average resting heart rate of 60 to 69 beats per minute. To measure resting heart rate, and then they have the instructions. Measuring resting heart rate is very, very simple. You can use the ring I have on. You could use the bands that I've recommended. You could use an Apple Watch. You could recommend like any one that you want. I'm not necessarily like, hey, you can only do one, although I'll be recommending more in the future of like exactly what I'm doing because this summer I'm going to get really in-depth uh, into all my different tracking. I'm going to go much bigger on my exercise and cardio programs and um, just taking it to that next level. Uh, and, and of course, my recovery as well is such a big part of that. So uh, look at your resting heart rate. And your resting heart rate in general, besides it being potentially linked to dementia, um, I, I think this is really important to note, it definitely signals more sympathetic nervous system dominance. That means more stress. So if you're like, well, how do I lower my resting heart rate? Okay, well, you can do all sorts of things to uh, biohack that down. But why don't we look at what are your particular triggers for stress? Could be food, food sensitivities, could be gut issues, could be um, pain in the body, or it could be work, relationships, trauma, etc. And so we need to work on all of those things because all of those things, right, fill up the rain barrel, the rain barrel overflows, and now, well, it can lead to disease in the body. All right, I'm going to link that up for you. Today's episode is 2303. That's where these research links will lie. And I'll also link up some of the research on bee pollen as well. All right, last but certainly not least is lo and behold... More research showing that good quality nutritional supplements actually work. I know, absolutely shocking to the conventional medicine world, but again, where have you been for the last 50, 60, 70 years? You know, welcome to the party. Uh, but here is another research done, a uh, study done by what? Harvard Medical School. How do they get in there? Uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, on 26,000 older adults, published in the BMJ, the prestigious uh, BMJ. And this lead was done by Dr. Karen uh, Kostenbader, a medical doctor. So again, for all those medical doctors saying that, oh, there's no research on those nutritional supplements, they just come out in your urine, they create very expensive urine. Again, please just be careful where you're taking your health advice from. I'm not going to give you medication and pharmaceutical advice. I'm not going to give you surgical-based advice. I'm not going to give you financial advice. I'm not going to give you accounting advice. I'm not going to tell you when to invest in crypto. That's not me. But if you're listening to someone who's dedicated their entire life to one thing, it doesn't even still mean that you need to listen to them. But it at least means that there is at least a certain level of study and research 
that's saying like, we might want to look into this, right? So if someone though in the finance field, the crypto field, the uh, investments field, the accounting field, or whatever field they're an expert in, they give me some advice, I'm going to look into it, right? And so again, even when conventional medicine comes around, I think we should at least look at this. So um, taking 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 and 1,000 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids for five years was associated with 30% lower risk from rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and other autoimmune diseases. Well, let's just take a little step back. So they're saying this, that basically you can reduce your odds of getting an autoimmune issue by about a third if you just use some vitamin D and some omega-3s, some daily omega-3s. I mean, pretty impressive, right? And, um, and again, they used a mercury-free omega-3 product, which I recommend, and they recommended one with higher EPA than DHA. We've been saying this now for a little over a decade in my practice since 2011, 2010. And now finally, people are starting to catch on that you want a higher EPA than DHA omega-3. Uh, we, of course, use our daily omega-3 support, nothing fancy uh, in terms of like hypey marketing names, but it does what it says it's going to. And you get two grams, uh, one gram for every capsule. And so it's a high potency one. So again, I just, you can always purchase from your favorite um local health food store that does mercury uh, testing, heavy metal testing, that is triglyceride bound, that's non-oxidized. Uh, same with your vitamin D3, however you want to do it. But just know that these things do work. I just, that's all I wanted to share with you. Like, don't wait until it's too late. Like, just do, and don't do mega doses either. I'm not a mega dose nutritional supplement type of person. You use not just the RDA 100%. That's, that's uh, just for eliminating like rickets and scurvy. We're talking about like, you're going to use a little bit more, but you don't need to use 20 grams of vitamin C a day. You don't need to use 10,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. You don't need to use 10 grams of omega-3s a day, all right? You use a little bit and you get all the rest from whole food. So that's really what it's all about. I know that that's not wild. That's not hypey. Um, I can never write a book that hypes that up because, oh, you're going to live a normal, healthy life. Like that's not exciting. <laughs> so, But anyway, I just want to share with you these things do work, and, and I hope that we can start to move maybe a little bit more towards that, uh, that balance line in the future. So thank you so much for helping me spread this message, this word with people, uh, and I will certainly be answering more of your questions on the weekend house calls. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.